race. There's two kinds of swing voters in this country. There's the classic one that people like to think of, of blue to red and red to blue, which is, there's something to be said for that. But the swing voter that we are most concerned with are the non-voters to voters. That swing voter is going to win us this election and the general election. We expanded our electorate 68% over the last off-year midterm primary election. That's how I won. We mobilized young people in my primary. The turnout of under 40 was as high as above 60. For a lot of people who don't vote, it's not due to being uninformed. There's all of these bad kind of uh, stereotypes about non-voters. And I think a lot of people deserve a lot more respect because non-voters, it's not because they're uneducated. It's not because they're apathetic. It's because a lot of people don't want to be consent, don't want to consent to be governed by nonsense. And that's why they don't participate in our system. I just published a story uh, in The Intercept, which is uh, extremely long, and everybody should go read the entire thing when you're done uh, uh, over here on, on YouTube. Uh, but it, it's, it's about the kind of organizing strategy that lies behind what Ocasio-Cortez is talking about there and what, what we're gonna hear Bernie Sanders talk about in just a second. And that's essentially this, and, and, and this is the part that they won't come right out and say. But the, the Democratic primary electorate, as it is currently constituted, kind of as it came out to the polls in 2012 and 2016, is whiter, wealthier, older, and more risk averse than the Democratic Party as a whole. And so for Bernie Sanders, you have this weird paradox where he is probably better positioned to win a general election against Donald Trump than he is to win a primary in the current Democratic primary electorate. So what does that mean? It means that if he's going to be the Democratic nominee as a 78-year-old Democratic Socialist, he's going to have to transform the electorate that comes out to the caucuses in Iowa to the primaries in New Hampshire. And, that's, and Bernie's going to talk very specifically about that in, in the next clip. But the, but in order to do that, you can't just you know, make a few viral videos, uh, give, some, give some speeches, and, and hope that people you know, click in and pay attention and come out on primary day, because these are people who are disaffected from politics. They're, you know, they're, they're not paying attention. And as AOC said, they're not paying attention, not because they're apathetic, but as a choice. They are withholding their consent from a system that they see as nonsense, as, as she put it. They don't want to consent to be governed by this idiocy, so they just, they just stay away. It, the most emotionally satisfying thing you can do, perhaps, to a completely corrupt system, if you feel like you can't overthrow it, is just simply ignore it. And so the entire organizing operation built around the Bernie Sanders campaign relies on people to go out and find these non-voters, what, what Ocasio-Cortez calls the swing voters from non-voters to voters. And there's data that back up that there's a lot of potential here. Everybody in Washington focuses on how you had all of these Obama to Trump voters. In other words, they voted for Obama in 2008, 2012, and then they switched to Trump. So Democrats are trying desperately to get them back. She alludes to them and says, sure, it's worth, it's, it's worth talking about them, but those aren't the ones we're talking about. There are actually a huge number of people who did vote in 2012 and then simply didn't come out in 2016 or voted third party in 2016. If you can bring them back into uh, the Democratic fold, that's great for a general election. The question for Bernie is, can he get those people to come back out for a primary? And he, can he get them to find their friends? And so what I go into the story is a lot of innovative and sophisticated organizing techniques that the Sanders campaign is using. A lot of them are detailed in, in the piece over at The Intercept, but I, I'll just lay one of them out here, which has never been reported before, but the Sanders campaign uh, gave me, gave me an, an insight into, and it's called precinct mapping. And it's based on a tactic that was deployed by Sri Kulkarni, who ran for Congress in a suburban Houston uh, race in 2018. He, he, there was, this was a district that Republicans won by 19 in 2016, he brought it back and he only lost it by five. He's now running again because the, the Republican incumbent sees the writing on the wall and is, is retiring. But something he did that very few people paid attention to was this, this idea where you 
you, pr you basically um, give a, a volunteer access to the names of all of the people that live in their voting precinct, in other words, that live in their neighborhood. And you ask them, who does this person support? What about this person? You know, what, what, what arguments would work to get this person to come out for Bernie Sanders? And per particularly in Iowa, where it's being rolled out at scale, this is proving to the campaign to be extraordinarily effective because people in Iowa know their community. The Sanders campaign has tested this. It's called Relational Organizing. The, the Analyst Institute, which does private uh, private surveys and private studies for, for campaigns, looked into whether or not you get more effective IDs from traditional door knocks and, and phone calls or from this type of relational friend-to-friend -friend organizing. And they found that uh, the friend-to-friend -friend assessments were 93% accurate. Because think about it, you know who your friend supports uh, or you, you very likely know who your friend supports. But when you're knocking on somebody's door, they might just tell you that they support whoever you support just to kind of keep you moving. And the same is, and the same is true on the phone. Uh, and so uh, what, what they found is not only are they more effective at identifying who they support, but they're more effective at getting that person to go to the polls or the caucuses on caucus day. If you get a random text uh, from an, a Bernie Sanders app that says, hey, it's election day, go out and vote, you know, that, that is better than, than you getting no reminder at all. But if you get a text from a friend or from an aunt that says, hey, it's, it's caucus day, uh, you know, Bernie needs you at the polls, you better get out there. Uh, both, both common sense and, and studies have shown that you're much more likely to respond to that sort of social pressure. And so that's what the Sanders campaign is, is deploying at scale in a way that hasn't been done before. You know, there's a, there's a lot more to it and I'd encourage everybody to ch check, check the piece out. Um, but but Bernie Sanders is is completely bought into this strategy and he understands that if he's going to win in the Democratic primary, that he has to expand the electorate. Here's how Sanders put it. We can win this Democratic nomination, but we can't do it without increased involvement in the political process. And what Alexandria said a few minutes ago is absolutely correct. There are a whole lot of folks out there who have given up. You know them. Some of you are in this room. Given up on the political process. My vote doesn't mean anything. Politics is bull****. They're all liars. Why do I want to vote? Right? You heard that. All right. But meanwhile, Trump and his friends will spend hundreds and hundreds of millions, if not more than a billion, on this campaign in order to get re-elected. What we need to do is participate in this campaign in a way that we have never done it before. We believe in non-bringing non-traditional voters into the political process, young people, working people.